winter time is coming and if you didn't know resin doesn't like to be printed in cold weather it thickens up the curing gets slower and you will start to get some field prints so today i'm going to show you how to install this heater quick disclaimer doing these kind of mods like i do is dangerous you are working with live power in my case 220 volt ac and dc and those things are going to kill you if you don't know what you're doing so please please watch out what you're doing do this only when you know what you're doing and uh, have fun building it we are going to need some stuff let's start with some 3d prints mm, nope not good enough yeah, it's better. It's better. It's still not great. Yeah, this is perfect. Look at this. Nice. All right, we got our 3D printed design. Now it's time to get some electronics. Nice. We have a rectifier. This is for AC to DC rectifier. Then we have our heater. This is an AC heater with a DC fan. That's why we need a rectifier. And we got our temperature control unit. I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going to start with some heated inserts. We are going to use some M6 heated inserts. Let's melt them into the project. The inserts are in. Next are the electronics. One thing I forgot to mention is that this is printed in ABS, but you can print this in PETG. Uh, anything better than PLA is just fine for this application. This heater came with some mounting brackets. I just snipped them off so it's nice and square. Now the reason that I am going to include this rectifier is because this is an AC heater and this is a DC fan. I don't know why, but I ordered some AC components, but they decided to put on a DC fan. So I built one myself. I'm going to uh, show you right now how I did that thing. It's just soldering some diodes together and I encased it in some uh, resin to secure it from uh, death <laughs> because this is going to get 240 volts of pure power. And if you're going to touch uh, 220 DC or direct current, this thing will zap the absolutely pants out of you. So uh, it's better off securing everything in some resin and using the leads to do the work. Now you can do this with uh, 24 volts or 48 volts DC and use an external power supply, but I wanted to have everything nice and clean so I can install this straight into the printer. No extra power supplies, just plug and play. We have the enclosure. Little bar is going to get into this slot, securing the cables down like that. The rectifier is going to sit somewhere over here. But first I'm going to try and uh, push in this heater element. And it should fit like this this is looking already very nice we have the two smaller wires this is going to be the fan then we have the two bigger wires that is going to be our heater so the fan has to be connected to this rectifier we have the purple and the brown wire this is the dc output and then we have the two orange wires and this is going to be the ac input all right i hope we are not going to blow stuff up but we have our heater we have our ventilator so we have our two phases coming in over here then we take one phase and we put it through a relay so we can turn it on and off and the other one we connect directly so we have the phase with the relay we have the phase coming straight from the uh, inputs and on the other side we have the outputs for the heater so everything should work i'm going to scoot back a little bit because it's still some uh, <laughs> because it's still some unknown chinese stuff and i don't want to get an explosion in my face if it goes boom so uh yeah i hopefully everything just starts running okay everything is wired up correctly or at least I think I did. Three, two, one, go.
I'm feeling some heat. The ventilator is blowing and it feels like everything is working perfectly. Now one thing, mm, it's a bit smelly. One thing we have to do is look if it turns off. This is the probe. I'm going to use my finger to heat it up. I set it to 31 degrees and once it reaches 31 degrees, it should turn off any minute now. And there it goes, it turned off. <clears throat> now I'm going to let it cool and after a half a degree of uh, temperature deviation, it should turn on again. And that's gonna be it. It looks a bit like the head of the uh, Voron printer series. <laughs> I really like it. And it works great. It's giving out some uh, good heat. You could uh, switch this thing around so it pulls air and it pushes into the case. Maybe I'm going to do that, maybe I'm not. I'm going to test it like, it's, like it looks. And there we go. We have 31 degrees and the whole system turned off. Now it pushes out the heat out of the front. Maybe that's a better solution and it keeps the uh, wires cool at the back. So I think I'm going to opt for uh, this contraption. So we have the Jupiter back on the desk. Now we have to decide where we are going to put this heater. Okay, now for locations. We can mount it direct on the floodlight, but that's a bit, yeah, meh, in my opinion. Maybe over here is a solution. Let's put in the build plates. Now let's have a look. This is going to pass. And this is going to pass. I think I'm going to put it up into this corner over here. Well, I totally forgot that this thing doesn't have AC inside. It uses a power brick. So this ID goes to the garbage, but not all is lost. We are going to use that power cable that you saw me testing the system with. So we have to remove this thing again and make another hole. All right, the inside is finished. This is looking very nice and sleek. And then we go to the uh, back side. Let's adjust a bit. So here we have the wall plug coming out of the back. All right, let's test it. Plugging it in. Let's close it up and see how long it takes. This took about 10 minutes to heat up to 30C, which is quite fast. All the files you need to print this thing and try it yourself are here down below. And if you liked the video, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And uh, guys, I see you in the next one.